In this series of videos, I'm going to be going over the process to do a rendered floor plan using Adobe Photoshop CS6. So this is a relatively complicated procedure, but once you get the steps down, it's really not that difficult. What we're looking at here is the finished product. And then over on the right in the layers menu, we'll see how a file like this is set up. So you can see here that there's actually a fair amount of layers and really what we're going to be doing is treating it a bit like a coloring book. So at the very bottom we see that there's a white background and then as we move through the file we see that it's divided up into layers for walls, floors, shadows and highlights, then things like counters, individual pieces of furniture, and things of that nature. So just so you can see this a little better, I'm going to turn off all of these layers. So you can see here's the blank document with nothing, a white background acting a bit like a piece of paper. Here would be our actual floor plan here. And this is coming directly out of AutoCAD. So this would work just as well with a hand done drawing, something done in SketchUp, Revit, uh, you know, any piece of software like that. Uh, this was brought in directly from AutoCAD, so it's very neat and clean and easy to work with. Then each layer that's set up is basically a fill layer. So we do things like fill in the walls individually, the floors, adding shadows and highlights to make it a bit more three-dimensional. And then get into things like countertops, fixtures, and so on. And with this type of process, you can get as detailed or keep it as simple as you would like it. So by the time we get through the series of videos, you'll have something that's looking similar to what we have on the screen right now. In the introduction video, we took a look at this floor plan, and this is basically our goal, to get something that looks about like this so that your clients would have an understanding of the types of materials you want to use, the overall location of them, and that type of thing. This can be done in a lot of different ways, but doing it in Photoshop is actually pretty simple and relatively forgiving. This is the final product. What is it going to look like when you begin? Well, it will look something like this. This particular file is brought out of AutoCAD. Therefore, you're seeing this gray and white checkered background. All that means is that this image is essentially transparent and the only thing really on this layer are the lines. So it's a bit like an animation cell or something like that. If you did this in a different piece of software or scanned in a drawing, it would look a little bit different. The advantage to bringing something out of AutoCAD like this is that the line work is very neat, very clean, and you don't have to do any cleanup to start. You wouldn't have to put in a white background, but at this point I think it's really helpful. It's a lot easier on your eyes and um, you get richer colors and things like that. So over in our layers palette you'll see that we have just the simple layer here, the floor plan outline. If yours looks like mine, what you want to do is come down to the bottom of the Layers palette, create a new layer. It will come in just as Layer 1. I could double click on that name to name it something a little bit more relevant like White Background, for example. And right now, if I just come into the Color Picker, make sure I have White selected, 
hit OK, I can just use the paint bucket and fill that in with white. Real simple. Now what you might be thinking is, I just lost all the line work. What am, what am I going to do? Well, you can rearrange the order of layers. So when you bring one in, it's actually going to stick it on top of whatever layer you had active. Not a big deal. In the Layers palette, simply click on that layer. You'll see you get a little fist, and then just pull that down and put it underneath of the floor plan outline. Now you'll see something that makes a little bit more sense. It looks like a drawing on a white piece of paper. Okay. So now that we have the basic drawing set up, what we really want to do is start blocking out areas and filling them with different colors. So we're treating this a little bit like a coloring book. There's different ways to select in Photoshop, uh, but really one of the easiest ways to do it is to go in with our magic wand tool. So over on the left of the screen, we have our toolbox, and a couple of buttons down will have the magic wand tool. Don't forget, when you're using Photoshop, if you're not very familiar with it, if you can't find a button, it very well might be hiding under a different button. They all kind of stack on top of each other. So you want the magic wand tool. On the magic wand tool, pay attention to your settings. Up at the top of the screen, you'll see that for each tool you open, there are different settings available for it. And the magic wand tool allows you to pick one selection at a time, add to the selection so you can click in multiple areas, remove from selection, or use an intersecting area. What we want to do is have add to selection, at least for right now. We can change the sample size. Right now, point sample will be just fine for what we're doing. And we can change the tolerance. Uh, this will matter to people more that have perhaps scanned in a photograph or something like that. Since we brought this in out of AutoCAD, it's very neat and clean. Leaving it at 32 will probably be fine. If you need to be more picky, you can reduce that number. Or if you need to be a little looser, you can raise it. We'll keep anti-alias checked. That will help smooth out the edges. And we will also keep contiguous checked. We want to grab connected areas. And that will be a good setting for us to start with. Then, as you work your way ar around, what we'll do is click on the floor plan outline, because that's how we're going to select. Basically, unless I you know, say different for one reason or another, when you do selections with this process, we will be coming back to the floor plan outline layer to do our selections. And then we will fill or create fill layers uh, outside of this so that we can always come back to this simple black outline without having a lot of extra information that we don't want. As we work on this, it'll become a little more clear. So with the floor plan outline selected, I can use my magic wand and click inside the walls. It will select all the continuous areas. And we'll get something like this. I can use my zoom tool to zoom in a little closer to see how that's looking. That looks like it should fill pretty nicely. I use control zero to zoom all the way back out. At this point, those of you that have used Photoshop before, Know that you have a few options. We could, of course, as I mentioned earlier, just fill it on this layer, but that will cause you all, all sorts of complications later. We could also create a new blank later, layer and just fill it in on there, uh, which would work perfectly fine. Or we could use our third option, which would be to create an adjustment layer or a fill layer. And that gives us a lot more control later. It makes our job a little bit easier. So that's a process I would like to use right now. So what I'm going to do with all of the walls selected is come down to the bottom of my layers menu. And there's a little button. It's a circle 
and it's divided in half, half is filled, half is empty. And if you hover your mouse over it, it says create new fill or adjustment layer. That's what we want to do. I often refer to this as a black and white cookie because that's kind of what that looks like. So we'll click on our black and white cookie and you'll see that you have a lot of options here. At this point, we're going to keep it really simple and we'll pick this top one, solid color. So I want to fill the walls with a solid color. Once I do that, it'll bring up the color picker. You could make your walls any color you want. I'm thinking, you know, a medium gray might be kind of nice. And you'll see once I pick this color, it actually previews it for me. And while I'm in here, I can pick different colors and actually preview what that might look like. It's a really, really handy feature. I could use magenta walls, but I think, like I said, maybe gray would, would make more sense. Once I have a color that I'm pretty happy with, I can hit OK. What you'll see has happened over in the Layers palette is we've created a new fill layer directly above the floor plan outline layer. It's giving me a thumbnail preview of the color I have, and it's also giving me a preview of the layer mask. And this is showing me a basic idea of that wall that's selected. I'm going to double click where it says color fill and change that to say walls. As my file gets more complicated, that's going to be pretty useful. If I decide at some point I don't like this gray, if I simply double click on that uh, gray thumbnail right there, I could come in, change the color, hit OK, and you'll see that it changed my wall color and my thumbnail preview. If I don't like it again, double click on it, open it up, say OK, and it'll change it to the next option. And this is going to be true the entire time you work. It's very, very useful.